in his refrigerator, he has a bowl of pre-rolled joints. I'm impressed. Amazing. I'm impressed. I was like, okay. Um, I would say, aesthetically, he was better on Hinge for my preference. In person, I was just kind of like, that'll do, pig. (laughs) That'll do. (laughs) I'm already here, you know? What are we going to do? Working overtime. Serve beer at a Bushwick die. Just trying to stay alive. But it's so damn hard. But I'm well not worry. The life ain't going as I planned. I heard it be hard, but it's so much harder. Well, I keep doing the best I can. Best I can. Welcome in and welcome under. Welcome back to Under the Apron, the podcast that asks one very important question. What happens when you give smelling salts to a girl who once passed out as a child to whippets? And we're going to find that out today. Uh, We are here with our now in-person co-host, regular. It's done. He's He's been signed. The contract is signed. Skyler. How you doing, buddy? I'm making so much money. On yeah, this oh, just dear. So you know. Yeah, it was a pretty big contract. Yeah. We had to sell most of our, <laughs> most of my nudes are on online now. Yeah, thanks to Skylar. It's on, it, OnlyFans is funding me. That's currently. right. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start an OnlyFans so we could pay Skylar to co-host, um, and it's not going well. We're actually losing money on the OnlyFans too. Uh, how are you? You doing all right? Good. Yeah, happy, healthy. I heard you got into a bar fight. Well, I heard you were more of so a more I of a didn't stand- get into a bar fight, <laughs> but I was around it. Yeah, I, heard you were, I was in the area. You were gazing at a bar fight. I was fight. gazing at a bar fight. No, it was actually kind of funny because uh, our friend Steve, who's been on the show. Yes, um, and our friend Aaron, who's been on the show. Who's been on the show as well. Um, Aaron started the fight. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah, Aaron started the fight, and then <laughs> Steve, uh, I won't say finished the fight, but <laughs> he ran. He he tried to tackle this guy. And then ran, the guy just stepped aside, and then he ran into a car. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a, it looked like a, a movie. Shout out Steve Malcolm, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I also heard that my girlfriend got involved and jumped on somebody's back and tried to. She hit did, me. yes, she was there, and she was uh, v- fervent. She was fervent. <laughs> she gets fervent sometimes. I don't even know if that's a word, but <laughs> she's currently sleeping off a, a late night last night. Um, but most importantly. We are here with a very special guest, Um, maybe the first, I believe the first guest who has their own podcast, so we'll see who the better podcast host is. (laughs) Yeah, we're fine. Podcast Wars, it's all three of us, Uh, whoever loses gets thrown out the window, but um, welcome to the show, Rocky. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I'm so glad. And uh, please go check out her podcast. It's called Wild Nights with Rocky Powell. Very fun. Um, I listened to a couple episodes so I could get familiar with it, and it was great. Uh, also, you recommended Christine Pinheiro's uh, yeah. episode, and that is a very fun, goofy one. So if you want a good place to start with her podcast, Christine Pinheiro. Go look it up. Yeah. Also, the beginning is a great place to start. The beginning. <laughs> the beginning is also a good place. Number to start. one, if you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Number yeah. one. Number one. I don't one know if you guys can. have heard about the number one, but. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited to have you on. Thank you. Yes. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Is it cool if I pull this? Yes, yes, little? yes. It should have been. Hot. It should have been uh, closer. Here, we'll That's pull right. The table. There we go. I'll, I'll just let the better podcast view. <laughs> no, that's perfect. All right, so I'm I'm negative one points for podcast host right now, but there's a lot of time left on the clock. We're gonna keep, keep scoring the entire time, just so you know. <laughs> okay, so before we go, move on to story time. Yes. Uh, Rocky was brave enough to. I asked her off air if she's ever done a smelling salt, and she said no. And then she told us a story about. <laughs> The one time she did whippets as a child when she was a child drug addict. And um, so, but she she said that she's willing to try. So I think it'd be great for us, as has become tradition on, on in-person, in-person uh, episodes, to do a smelling salt right before your story. Uh-oh. And we're off. The show has just started. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You guys, your faces. Just take a quick look. Oh, oh my God. 
That is not what I expected yeah. at all. <laughs> it's chlorine, kind of. Yeah. It's like Windex. Yeah. Which I don't yeah, really Yeah, Windex. Shout out to Windex. Yeah, yeah. shout out to Windex. Shout out to Windex. Now the inside of your nostrils are very clean. Woo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are those legal? Yes. <laughs> I bought them on Amazon. I hope they're legal. Oh, my goodness. Now, now that now that we got you all riled up and keened in, uh, what do you have for us for story time? Buddy? Okay. I, like, look down, and I could like, see the inside of my leg, basically. <gasps> I will never suck your dick. <laughs> I wound up watching Back to the Future getting fucked up with Doc Brown. As he, like, sits her on the stool, and no joke, she shit herself. Oh, like, no! <laughs> Dude, this story's crazy, guys. It's story time. Heartland Brewery was the best. The owner, not so nice. Oh, yeah. Not so nice. No, no. Um, and if he would come in, people would be like, oh, my God, he's coming. We got to make sure there's chamomile tea and the tea caddies. Like, everyone's freaking out. So he came in, and he's sitting at the bar, and he's whispering with all the managers and everything, and they start blocking off a couple of the corner tables that are away from the rest of the people. And of course, I'm like, my heart's beating out of my chest. I'm like, I know someone famous is coming in. <laughs> I know this is going to be my responsibility. Like, I can't do anything. I'm throwing water on my face in the, in the bathroom. Like, why me? <laughs> why do I have to be so good at waitressing? <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, not only do I have to wait on this asshole, I have to wait on whatever celebrity is coming in. So eventually, the managers pull me to the side. They're like, Rocky, I'm like, I know, I know, just, mm -hmm. just who is it? <laughs> just mm -hmm. tell me. And they're like, vanilla ice. <laughs> and I go. You got way more nervous. <laughs> I took the biggest deep breath. I was like, oh, vanilla ice? Like, I could do that. Yeah, yeah, I could yeah. do vanilla ice. That's perfectly fine. So he comes in. He brings this, like, entourage of guys with him. There's this one really small guy who's mean mugging everybody, like, <laughs> I'm like, is this your muscle? Like, I could flick this guy across the <laughs> restaurant. Like, who's protecting you, Vanilla Ice? So he comes in. Um, then all these other random women start to gravitate towards him. He's being very nice, by the way. He's not being, you know, this is no shade to be. Right. Yeah. No shade to be. V.I. V.I. That's how we always be called. He likes to be called V.I. Yeah, yeah. um, and so he, he was, like, perfectly cool. But the owner who is this, like, way older man, is, like, sitting with Vanilla Ice. And if you knew him and you saw these two together, you'd be like, oh, this is a mismatch. Right. Like, they're only together because this guy partially owns Guy Fieri's restaurant. This is the only reason. So the night starts to, like, wind down. He's being really, like, a good guy. The owner's so blackout drunk <laughs> at this point. He's this little old bald man, and he's, like, falling all over himself, <laughs> dropping money, and just, like finally leaves thank right. god the weight kind of of him being in the restaurant kind of like subsides everything's chill and then vanilla ice leaves his whole bill was comped all the people he was with the women the the mini entourage his little muscle they all leave and i go to the table there's nothing on the table oh nothing on the table oh. so my ex-boyfriend had got ice ice babied. I got ice ice babied. My ex-boyfriend happened to be in the restaurant that night. Uh -huh. He was picking me up. He's sitting at the other end of the bar waiting for me. And I go, he stiffed me. Vanilla Ice gave me nothing. His whole bill was comped. We paid for all those people. He didn't give me a dime. Then all of a sudden, the muscle walks up to me. The little muscle. No. Oh, little muscle. The little muscle. And he goes, hey. And I go, okay, hey. Uh -huh. He goes, Rob wanted me to give you this. And then he palms me $130, mostly in crumpled singles, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> mostly in crumpled singles. Okay. But it was, to this day, the biggest tip I've ever gotten from a celebrity. Wow. Small muscle, big tip. <laughs> yeah, he could use small muscle, big tip. So Vanilla Ice is, like, okay with me. All right, there you go. Yeah. What a life, though, to, like, go around eating at these, like, great restaurants and bars all the time and imagine if all you ever had to pay was tip imagine i would i'd be out at nobu every night yeah 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 but still wouldn't that get really expensive i mean if you all you have to pay is tip theoretically you're probably somebody of huge importance right. when you walk through the door so you would have the money right but yeah I'd be no, but you're paying 20 percent of the bill yeah yeah every anywhere that you go that's true it's a nice life I, yeah, you're going to break my heart if I found out that my hero, Vanilla Ice, didn't tip any. No, your heart's intact. And my heart, good to go. heart's intact. Him and Jimmy Fallon are okay in my book. 
hundred dollars. Oh, those are the two people that he bases his life on. Yeah, it's, it's Jimmy Fallon and Vanilla Ice. Well, this is convenient. Yes, it <laughs> sure is. Let let's move let's move uh, along to mm-hmm. topic roulette because we uh, uh, it's pretty clear at this point that we could talk forever at any moment on yeah. on anything which is great this is exactly the flow that we want to be in but um, if you haven't heard our podcast before P- topic roulette is when our guest comes with a topic uh, that we don't know about. And we come with a topic that our guest doesn't know about, and we discuss for about eight minutes. Full disclosure, I did let Rocky know about the uh, our topic. I, oh, you already told her. I was a little stoned a couple of days ago, and I was like, "Ah, fuck it, let her know. Let's have some fun." Because I do, I, I think that there's there's something that can be good about somebody having a little bit of preparation time to yeah. to get ready for it. So, would you like to go first or second? Um. Maybe I'll just go first. Beautiful. Yeah, get, get it. it over with. Fucking do it. One thing I want to say that's really funny about you that I listened to in past episodes is I think you they would be like your old co-host. You'd be like, oh, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Yeah. Or you'd be like, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. You go first. You always knew the answer, but you would always go, it doesn't matter, but yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, thank you. Do you guys have a name for your fans? Uh... Well, her name was Grandma, but she passed away. <laughs> no one so we have zero fans <laughs> now. But we're hoping that one day another grandma can come along. No, only fans. Call me undies, dude. Only yeah. fans. Undies. Um, no, because I, I was like, I, I think I'm one of them because I loved hearing oh, the service you. industry stories. Appreciate that. Um, we'll call them the Gifieties. The Gifieties. Uh, okay. So my topic. Yes. Okay, I want to ask you to what it's like for you when you go out with someone to eat. You're not picking up the tab. This person is picking up the tab for the group or just you and them. Mm-hmm. And they under tip. Ooh. However, you're in a position where it's like if you say something or if you leave a better tip, it's going to be a bad day. Mm-hmm. What do no, you I got? Yeah. I got how do you handle that? This is not great. I hope my mom uh, doesn't watch this. <laughs> but one time. You're out. <laughs> I went out with my mom and her friend, and my mom was picking up the, the, the check, and she was, you know, wanted to treat our, our, our very kind, very nice friend who's done so much for us in our lives. Yeah. And she left like a, it was a, it was still a 20% tip, mm-hmm. but the guy had come over and given us shots, like a, a round mm-hmm. of like Sambucas at the end, and I was like, dude, that's got to at least be 30 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta at least go 30. You just gotta pay what you got for free. Just give them that money, right? Brush the 25 at yeah. least. <laughs> yeah. At least 25. And then I <laughs> I stupidly did bring it up to her in the moment. <laughs> and she cried. <laughs> well, you know, your mom's gotta learn. <laughs> you learn. Yeah, and you taught her. That was, that was a lesson <laughs> for sure. And if you're listening, I hope that you have learned now. And you, you know? Learn your lesson. Turns Terry. Off. Terry, I hope you <laughs> learn your lesson, Terry. And also, if you want to come on and uh, the podcast and do some smelling salts, we'd be happy to have you. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like how many times I've actually been in that position. Yeah. Because it hasn't been many. I, I have talked recently about on this podcast about how fucking annoying my family can be as customers, but they're not bad tippers. So oh, yeah. That in that sense, but I but I will tell them constantly that they're like the worst people to deal with at a at a restaurant. But um, I think if I can remember, it, it's it's just like so circumstantial, right? Yeah. Like depends on your relationship with the person. It depends on how you're feeling that day, how many smelling salts you've done. <laughs> um, I think I I think for the most part I'd probably swallow my tongue with that. Yeah. Sometimes it's not the right time to do that, and to no. be, sometimes it's not the right time to be the hero. No. And that waiter or waitress is going to have to take a hit, and that sucks. But that happens. Yeah. So I don't know. We've had this conversation off camera before. People who work in the service industry who tip shitty. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. We've had, also had it on the worst people. I stopped talking to a friend because of how she behaved at a restaurant once. Me and her were in the trenches at the comedy club, and uh, she. we went to – do you remember Triple Crown? Sounds familiar. Triple Crown. It's on 7th Avenue by Madison Square Garden. Okay. Um, oh, my God. Your dog is resting his head on my knee, and I'm melting. <laughs> um, me and her and another friend, who we all were in the trenches together. Oh, no. I got you. Um, we were all in the trenches together, and we were having this great night out, 
and she wanted burger. She wanted onions on her burger. And she was like, she said to the waitress, she's like, you know, I want sauteed onions. And the girl goes, okay, very nicely. It'll just be $1.95 extra. And she goes, what? <laughs> I've traveled all over the country and I have never had to pay extra for onions. Are you crazy? <laughs> Freaks out. Oh, and I was like, no. she was a little older than me, okay. um, maybe like six or seven years older than me. And I was like, yo, girl, why are you talking to her like that? You know how people talk to us. Why yeah. would you do that? And she just goes, oh, stop it, Rocky. I've been a waitress way longer than you. And that was the last time I ever spoke to her. That is a sentence that ends friendships for sure. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any, did you have an answer for your, the question that you asked? I think my answer is very similar to yours yeah. where it's, I've never said anything if I've seen somebody under tip because um, if I'm not with people who know how to tip, it's probably somebody I don't really know. Um, but I just always – I believe very much in energy and um, I'm pretty vibes. esoteric. Yay. Vibes, bro, <laughs> vibes. Um, so if I'm with somebody and I can't go back and, like, give a tip or say something to the person I'm with, I'll just be like, I hope that person – that person's going to have the best night. The next person that comes in is going to tip them like crazy. But okay. I'm, I'm never able to look at – the person the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, let let's move on to uh second the topic. second topic. topic. So welcome to the second topic. Um and uh as I mentioned I, I shared this with Rocky and the the re it's funny because I actually had it as the topic before I listened to your podcast. And then I was like, okay, well this is fucking perfect for for us. So so um the topic is going through a slutty phase. Right. Ooh. And what he didn't tell me this. Yeah. Yeah. No, he didn't tell me this. <laughs> he didn't tell you that? No. I actually gave her an, a different topic because I wanted to sabotage her. <laughs> Yo, you're I, I'm trying to sabotage her because I want to be the better host. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, we're beating your podcast right yeah, now. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, no. But going through a study phase, and I, I wanted to explain this a little bit. Just by chance, I happened to hear a couple of different podcasts uh, listening to a couple of different podcasts that happened to bring up this topic. In various ways. And every single one of them, even though they're around our age and they're very open-minded, mm -hmm. all of them sp spoke so poorly about the slutty times in your life mm -hmm. and just going out and being promiscuous and all that stuff. Everybody had the same thought process, which was like, that's not a healthy place to be. And I was just shaking my head the whole time like, I completely fucking disagree with right. that. Completely. Um, and I have my own very specific like dissertation on this. But uh, And then I just I thought of that in relation to the podcast. And very often, if you're working in the service industry in your early 20s, it's going to coincide with and, and like be a part of the time where you're probably most pr promiscuous in your life. So as much as it can, you can relate it to your service industry life, that's great. If it has nothing to do with the service industry, that's fine too. But just, y did you have a slutty phase at any point? And now, how do you feel about it in retrospect? Or are we still in it? I was like, is it over? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear a, a bell. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I actually think that's a great, topic and i think that uh, a lot of people do get a little like i don't want to talk about that and that's their you know Business, that's their right. their journey and that's all good you have a favorite hookup story my favorite hookup story uh, funniest i'm gonna go funniest funniest hookup story okay <laughs> so we'll call him jt jt2 uh i go to his apartment meet him off hinge you know i go there he's like uh can I offer you like some weed? And I was like, hell yeah, always gonna say yes to weed. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> weed and smelling salts, <laughs> my two kryptonites. Um, so I go to his apartment and he opens his refrigerator. In his refrigerator, he has a bowl of pre rolled joints. I'm impressed. Amazing. I'm impressed. Yeah. I was like, okay. Um, I would say aesthetically, he was better on hinge for my preference. In person, Always. I was just kind of like, that'll do, pig. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> I'm already here. You know, what are we going to do? So, I <laughs> so I'm sitting on his couch. He's got this giant TV. He's all the way over there. I'm all the way over here. And I'm just kind of like, 
a little drunk. I think I went to drag bingo earlier that day, drank at a friend's apartment, take the Uber over there. And so I'm like, oh, God, this guy's annoying. Like, we got to just get to, <laughs> <laughs> get to the good stuff. And so he... <laughs> Yo, I don't want to listen to you speak, but yeah, yeah. I really I didn't look at your penis, me, maybe. But we did have to warm up and do the pleasantries. So we're each in this individual joint. He's got, I think, the Sopranos blasting, oh, which, does. you know, really gets me in the mood. Um, Shout out JT. Shout out JT, too. And then on his wall, he was... Some kind of nutritional fitness person where yeah, he like planned he people's meals and <laughs> stuff. I, I don't know. But uh-huh. he had this big whiteboard on his wall with all these things. But he was very nice. Like he was like being interested and nice and stuff. And so we have sex. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like he was done like pretty quickly. And I was <laughs> like, <laughs> Okay, like, ha- all right, well, I just came all the way over here. I'm in Woodside. It's not a big deal, you know. It's going to be an eight-minute cab ride home, but really, that that was it in my head. And so we're kind of, like, cuddling a little, but ugh. I'm not, yeah, definitely ugh. ugh, definitely ugh. So we're kind of cuddling a little, and then I say something, and we're having, like, nice conversation from what I can recall, and he says something, and he goes, now my hinge name, my real name is Raquel. Everybody calls me Rocky, but my, my government is Raquel. Right. And so on hinge, I was on there as Raquel. And my last name is Powell, obviously. Um, so he goes, while we're laying in bed, after he nutted in four seconds, <laughs> he <laughs> says, he goes, I said something, and he goes, ah, Raquel Powell what am I going to do with you? Oh, my God. Well, first of all, Vom. <laughs> but then wow. I just go, how do you know my last name? And he goes, oh, it's on, it's on your Hinge profile. I said, what? <laughs> you got to help me fix this. So I pull out my Hinge while we're naked in his bed after he nutted in four seconds. <laughs> and I make him edit my Hinge to take my last name off of it. <laughs> Oh, you deserved it after the four-second nut. We, he tried again. It was better. It was fine. You know, he was able to come back. Um, the IT guy. I think he was able to come back after about 10 minutes once we, fi- the, you know, solved the problem of the last name. That's a great thing. If, if the guy nuts too quickly. Remember this. Write this down, everybody. Write this down. If the man nuts too quickly, come up with a fun little interlude project. So whether that's he's helping you to edit your hinge profile yes. or i don't know if you need like your shelf door needs to be tightened or something Ugh, give them like a in. give them like a 10 to ikea if you really go to trying, ikea if it was a three second right exactly whatever you need to do something that's going to take about 10 to 30 minutes and then you're right back in the game and maybe yeah. maybe round two won't be so bad he had a donkey dick too it didn't matter it uh, wasn't like anything to write home about but he was yeah swanging swanging swanging, swanging. Swing, Met nothing. L- swing low, sweet chariot. Yeah, that's what they say. Damn. Well, JT, this is not a good episode for you, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry that you're listening. That. Yeah, yeah. You never know. I will say once during the pandemic, I was taking a walk with two friends, and he lived in this random building in Woodside, like I said, and we're just like walking all over Astoria, walking all over Woodside because there was nothing else to do. Right. So we got like box wine and started walking. Is that Mexican? No. No, that wasn't Mexican. <laughs> okay, okay, of course no, not. I know if you're... <laughs> it was just like, you know. Uh. <laughs> a white, white girl. Okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm walking with my two friends, and I just go all of a sudden, I'm like, I know this building. I can smell a four-second nut from a mile away. A mile away or from right outside. I'm like, this man is four-second nutting on some <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and giving our nutritional facts. Oh, God. Um, Skyler, what are your thoughts? Slutty phase. Slutty phase? Slutty, I actually, funniest I Funniest slutty story. I have, I have a funny story. I got it. Okay. Yay. I thought about it in the middle of that story, and I was like, oh, man, I think I actually have one. Yeah. Um, I, in, it was probably a uh, freshman year of college, went to visit my friend at Villanova, and, um, I was sitting on a couch at uh, this is the first because I I went to NYU. Mm-hmm. I did not fucking go to any type of um, frat parties before, right? So I went to Villanova. It was the first like frat party ever. This was like the 
kind of frat party that you see in movies. Like people were doing, you know, the most. dancing on tables, you know, taking shots, doing fucking keg stands. It was it was that situation, and I got into the vibe. I was like, you know what? If I'm gonna be fucking, if this is it, if this is all I got, if I got one frat party in my life, I'm gonna make it happen. So I was sitting between these two women that I will say weren't the most attractive women in the world. They weren't, you know, they're just not. It was it was certainly. I certainly. I feel bad saying this, but I certainly was like, any other day. Probably not, but right now I'm in the vibe, gonna do it. So I looked at both of them and was like, threesome? <laughs> and they were like, no, dude. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. And then one of them was like, we could, you, we could do a twosome. <laughs> and so I went out with her. We banged on the front yard of this party. While people, it's were, people were still coming While in. It's yeah, like yeah. It was like in the middle of this party. People were still coming in. And I heard as we were banging on the on lawn, on lawn, on grass, I heard someone go, "Yo, are those two guys banging? <laughs> like, what's going on?" And then, um, and then, and then we left. We left the party, and we went to a different party. And I was like, "Fuck, I want to bang again." So I texted her, and I was like, "Young, I'm gonna come to your dorm." She was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's go." And. It turns out she lived with that other girl that, that I, I you proposed the threesome to. And in college, you have bunk beds, right? Mm-hmm. So she slept on the top bunk. So we were banging on the top bunk. And the entire time we're banging, her fucking roommate was going, Yo, you've got a boyfriend. Stop. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. And then right after she said that, I fell off the top bunk. <laughs> Naked as shit, stood up, you know, dick and dick in her face, basically. Like, yeah. oh, sorry, <laughs> climb back up. <laughs> and the worst part of the story is the next morning. The next morning, I because I was like, after that, it was like kind of embarrassing. Oh, obviously, shit. embarrassing. Even as drunk as I was, it was embarrassing for me. I just fucking threw my pants on. I left, and I'm talking outside with um, my f- uh, my my girlfriend. To B's best friend also went to Villanova, and this was the first time we were hanging out that morning, talking outside this dorm room, and this girl comes up to me with a plastic bag with my underwear in it and hands it to me in front of my to be girlfriend's best friend. <laughs> I cannot believe I dated that girl for three years. Wow! That. Wow! Oh my god! Absolutely, she heard that story. Wow! I was like, damn, well. I'll, I'll put it in three years. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That'll show you what's out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, for real. It is, <laughs> it is a scary problem. Underwear guy, not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I love that we're sharing stories, and it's funny because I, I have one. I have one of my funnier ones. The craziest one I'm not going to tell on this podcast because there's a chance that it would get back to the person, and I don't ever want her to feel publicly embarrassed. But if ever uh, we trade p- sides and, and you're that. the host – and I'm the guest. I will tell it on your podcast. So, so that's a little <laughs> saving it for that, your podcast. Yeah, yeah. That's a oh, wait. that's a little. Uh, what's it called? Jesus. Those are some breadcrumbs for the for my episode on uh, Wild Nights with Rocky Powell. But um, before I get into the story, I did want to talk about this thing, which is the the cultural uh, like rejection of your promiscuous time. like the dismissal of it as this immature or unhealthy time in your life, which I, like I said, fully disagree with. There are people who do have, and their, their relationship to sex is one that was unhealthy for any number of reasons. And so they look back on their slutty phase as an unhealthy time because they weren't doing that for the right reasons. Yeah, That's completely understandable. But if, in my opinion, and in my experience, if you get to the point of being of, of having a lot of sex and being casual about it, and you get there rel- relatively in a healthy way, where you're not doing it for attention, you're not doing it for validation, you're doing it because you're young and you're fucking horny, and it's not time to 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 have a kid yet. It's like that. Per- there's a perfect 
20 years that potentially where that could be in that place where it's like, I'm going to get to know a lot of people. Yeah. I'm going to have a lot of fun experiences. I'm not looking to put my anchor down anywhere. Let's take, let's take this journey for what it is. It's, it is a fun time in life. And you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. You learn, like you said before, what you were talking about with like even just the the nuances of, oh, we're at somebody's house. I know that I'm here to have sex with this person. Yeah. I'm not here because I, I think there's any chance of us falling in love. I have no illusions about that. I didn't need a nutrition plan, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaican? No. So, uh, <laughs> so um, I, you know, it, it's, it, it's learning how to, the all the all the interactions with that mm -hmm. it's learning what you like and what you don't like about sex it's learning what you like and what you don't like about uh, about you know being intimate with somebody in general not just sex but like everything that goes in that gets involved with that you come out the other side of that knowing a hell of a lot more of who you are and what you need out of a relationship yeah. than you did beforehand and that's very important and also it's fucking fun and you're young and you should have, have fun. You should fuck your coworkers. If you're listening to this podcast and you work at a restaurant and you're like, I shouldn't fuck my coworkers. That's it. Don't shit where you eat. Shit where you eat. It's fun. I'll be the only – I'll stand on that take. We are the only uh, podcast out there telling you to <laughs> fuck your coworkers. A lot of my girlfriends were really supportive when I um, ended up being single and – was like, oh, okay, I should have sex now. Like, I should like, go do this. Let me see and do it at a pace that I feel comfortable and not at a pace other people think I should do it. They had had their phases way before and they were all starting to settle right, down. Right. So it was like they are living vicariously and yep. wanting the tea from all of it. So whenever you feel like, hey, maybe I want to have sex with more people than I previously had, go do it. And like you said, there's stuff to be safe and – um, I think a lot of the time it is different for women too because a lot of men, women sleeping with men a lot of the time will get labeled slutty right, exactly. as a projection. Right. Like when a guy's like, are you cheating on me? It's like usually he's cheating. Sure. So yeah. that that's what makes it tough for women to like navigate having sex. They don't want to be labeled slutty. Totally. They, they also are like, I would like to know um, – what is dick taste I like? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, nobody wants to know what anyone's dick tastes like. <laughs> they just want to be penetrated. Just guessing which uh, <laughs> accent you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm never no, that doing. Was, that was clear. That was that was Portuguese. <laughs> that was Portuguese. I'm never doing an accent. I'm always know, doing I know voices. I know. <laughs> I know. We we know what you're doing. We know. We know. <laughs> okay. No, that was Portuguese. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what we're saying is bang. Yeah, yeah. Go bang. Yeah, go bang. Go bang. Go bang. And uh, yeah, I. I totally agree with everything that you just said, and I and, and I think I'm I'm really speaking. And here's here's one other thought, real quick. I think the reason why a lot of people who are looking back on their time mm -hmm. have a negative feeling about it is because it does, for most people, run its course. It does, and yeah. you and you get to a place where it's sort of gross and desolate and lonely, and you you have a couple hookups where you're like, I've been here too many times before. This doesn't have any soul left to it, mm -hmm. and I feel gross about it. And then you leave, but that doesn't dismiss the whole all, all the things that happened before and all the experiences that came from it just because it has a, a runtime doesn't mean it wasn't worth going through through all those experiences at least not and i i don't feel that way and you know it's funny that you you mentioned um i forget but it, it, it's it's having stories too mm -hmm. right like i don't have as many stories as i used to when i was running around being a young hoe uh just just hoeing it up on the streets and it it it, that's another part. It's life experience. It's fun. And so I have my 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 penultimate sex story. Again, the ultimate one. Come to uh, Wild Nights with Rocky Powell for, for the ultimate. Um, but penultimate is I was out one night and I was at a bar with some friends and I, I, don't, I, I was just kind of not in the mood to really hang with anybody. So I was, sit, I was at the bar by myself. End up talking to this girl who's sitting next to me. I'm not particularly attracted to her i'm yeah. certainly not thinking about sex while it's going down but we wind up talking the whole night she was cool she was like interesting enough we had a fun enough conversation that we were going and at the end of the night i'm like all right have a good night and she's like really like she's like i live like four blocks away like you know what's up she brings me back to her house it's 4 30 in the morning at this point and we just get right to it and she is like i like to be dominated i like when you, I like to be like berated. Like, and I, she's like, I need you to like bring your A game and just whatever. So it was a night 
full of me just yelling the wildest shit at this girl. I'm not going to even say most of it on the on the podcast, but it w- yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, don't say the n word. It was <laughs> yeah. In it, accents. It wasn't. It wasn't generic. <laughs> <laughs> it was not generic. Um, and so yeah, I'm just screaming. You are a fucking stupid piece of shit. Like that's my pussy from now until forever. Like that's a Portuguese accent. You stupid bitch. Stop doing a fucking <laughs> Portuguese accent. You fucking crazy cunt. Uh, so I'm yelling these things. Yelling. 5.30 in the morning at this point. Pass out. Wake up. Go take a piss. Walk out. There's an older man sitting at the coffee table. I'm like, fuck, I had no idea somebody was here last night. I go into the room. I go, do you have like a old, real old roommate? No. She's like, no, I, I live with my parents. No. Her parents' bedroom shared a wall no. with the room that we were having sex in that I was screaming like a, like, the worst things you could ever hear. She's screaming, I'm screaming no. for hours. And then she's ha- handed your your underpants. And then she was like, "Here's your <laughs> underpants, sir." That was you, Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I never got I never spoke to her again. Never got to the the bottom of it. But I really now that that now that I have time to think about it, I'm like, what was the reason for that? Like you must she it, she was either. There's to me. There's only two options: either really, really pissed off at her family, and trying sp- specifically to like ruin their lives, or so unaware of herself, such like an only child that she just doesn't even care about it. I think there's a third option. What's the third option? The third option is she likes being degraded so much that she wanted that awkward breakfast the next morning oh, with her parents. Yeah. Oh that wow. A parental she knew thing. she knew that it was gonna make her feel weird the next morning. Mm. It was like fucking. Yikes! This I didn't is even. Cool. Yeah, that's good. No, yeah. that is good. This is fucking cool for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. We all we've all had some fun times. JT, if you're listening. JT two. JT two. Yeah. We love you. Heard you're hung like a like a four minute four second man. Um, okay. So. Unless anybody has any th- uh, last thoughts about promiscuous times. No, no. Yeah. Okay. I never fucked a coworker. Never fucked a really? coworker. Yeah, really. You've never shot where you ate? No, I've made out, made out, but never, so yeah, you've, never. You've, you've Are you peed currently where, in a relationship? where you ate? Yeah, no. Are you currently working at any bars or restaurants? I am not. I work. I am, but I'm not working. I work with like a lot of men who are also interested in men. Mm. And they're, they're not trying to, they're not DTF. Mm. So, and I'm not. Yeah, there's no there's no vibes there. No, but no. I've never done that. Yeah, it's fun. When it's fun, it's fun, because because then like work becomes this whole sexual tension. I've had sexual tension Matt. at work, yeah, but like not the next level. The what like where you just happen to walk past them in the dry walk and and just throw them in the dry walk and like throw them up against the wall, and make out for a quick fun. second. That sounds fun. Okay, so we're going to move on to the end of the show. Rocky, you've been a fantastic guest. Thank you, Thank you f- so me. much for doing this. Um, I appreciate it. And I think I don't have the, the official score yet, but I think you may have won the contest of, of hosts. So, no. uh, yeah, yeah, we have to end the podcast. This is our last episode. Thanks a lot, Rocky, for ruining our podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, this, yeah. <laughs> but I know another podcast you can listen to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So again, we're we're starting to do this now. This is a new new thing, new exclusive world premiere, um, where at the end of the show or the beginning of the show, we're gonna do some word associations with our with our guests. So first thing that pops in your head, I'm just gonna start throwing shit out. You ready? Yeah. Vegan. Diet. <laughs> uh, skinny. Dipping. Oat milk. Gross. Jews. Friends. <laughs> You could have you could have really fucked that one up. Yeah, yeah. Taylor Swift. <laughs> too much right now, but I do love her music. Sorry, that's a lot of words, but too much. Restaurant manager. Drug of choice. Oh, Molly or oh, mushrooms, mushrooms. <laughs> Molly's more of a drug. Mushrooms is from the earth. Molly. <laughs> Laundry. The worst. Brunch. Fun. Dad bod. Depends. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, this has been a, this has been a blast. Thank you very much. We love you. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye. Bye, camera.
Thank you.